This is Democracy Watch. Mark, we've got some bombshell news at the U.S. Supreme Court. So Republicans have just asked the Supreme Court to block the counting of certain provisional ballots in Pennsylvania. What's going on here? Yeah, so you know, we've talked in previous episodes about the various ways in which Republicans want to not count lawful votes. Well, in Pennsylvania, it has taken itself to an art form. There are the ballots that Republicans don't want to be counted because they are so-called naked ballots, where there's not the ballots not in an inner secrecy envelope. There are the ballots that they say are misdated, they where the voter didn't put the right date next to the signature on the other envelope. There are the ballots that they are undated. Well, so there's been a lot of litigation about this, but in a very, very important case to voters and to the 2024 election, frankly, the the Pennsylvania Supreme Court said that a voter who makes a technical error of that kind can still show up to vote on election day and cast a provisional ballot, and that provisional ballot will count. So for example, you're at home in Pennsylvania and you cast your mail-in ballot and you put it in the mail and then you look around your table and you're like, oh wait, what's this extra envelope? And it is the inner secrecy envelope. At that point you realize, oh my God, I have cast a naked ballot. What am I to do? So what the Pennsylvania Supreme Court said is that you voter can go to vote on election day vote a ballot, it'll be a provisional ballot because you've already gotten an absentee ballot, but your absentee ballot will count. Now, this seems like a very common sense thing and one that everyone would embrace in a, in a functioning democracy, but what did they do? Brian, you know what comes next. The You said it, the Republican National Committee has sought an emergency order from the U.S. Supreme Court to prevent those votes from being counted. Okay, do you anticipate that the Republicans will be successful in their endeavor here? They certainly should not be successful for a variety of reasons. Number one, and probably you know, principal among them, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court was simply interpreting Pennsylvania law, and it is kind of you know black, black you know letter law, uh, sort of first principle that that federal courts, including the U.S. Supreme Court, don't second guess the interpretation of state law by the highest court in the state. So so in a normal situation, the answer would be this would be left out of court. Now, they are pitching the fringe independent state legislature theory. Once again, this is this theory that we talk about over and over again because Republicans keep trying to get the U.S. Supreme Court to bite on this that says that in federal elections, presidential, House, and Senate elections, that um, the state courts are not the final say on how state law uh, is interpreted, but rather they can be second-guessed by either a federal court or by the U.S. Supreme Court. Let's hope that that the Supreme Court um, uh, does not wade into this. They should summarily reject this petition, but, you know, it's the U.S. Supreme Court. Well, OK, so on the independent state legislature theory, th- that's not any more existent than the, than the Green New Deal is. Um, in, the independent state legislature theory has never passed muster in any case at the U.S. Supreme Court. So how can they keep using this, uh, this non-existent doctrine, this non-existent theory as a basis for these court challenges? Well, so you're right. Um, No court has adopted the independent state legislature theory. The Supreme Court has had several opportunities and it has never adopted it. Lower courts have been flooded with this theory by Republicans throughout the country and none of them have adopted it. Uh, But the Republicans just keep advancing it and they are hoping that, you know, they, they catch uh, you know, lightning in a bottle. And they, at right. the right time, they get a, a configuration of a case and a configuration of Supreme Court justices that decide to do it. Now, this would be a very odd case for the U.S. Supreme Court to, to do that on because it is so clearly just the application of a, at worst, ambiguous state law. But I think the Pennsylvania Supreme Court's position is this actually isn't that complicated. Like there's a right to cast a provisional ballot in the Pennsylvania law. And so they are effectuating that law. And so this should be an easy case for it to be um, rejected. You know, I will point out that, you know, this case, that because it comes out of um, Pennsylvania, it initially goes to the circuit justice, which in this case is Justice Alito, uh, who has to then, you know, who then should be sending it on to the full court for a decision. Mark, could you talk about why this is an issue in Pennsylvania in particular? I mean, like, what, what, what is it about the law in Pennsylvania that that we keep having? I mean, you, you listed out a whole raft of different weird litigious rabbit holes that we keep finding ourselves in and it's only really in this state yeah 
And, and I think there are two reasons for it. The first is that Pennsylvania has some pretty antiquated laws um, and, and the Republicans in that state have refused to fix some of these very, very simple things. I mean, another example is why is it that the election results are going to be slower in Pennsylvania than other states? Well, right, because we, they won't change the law they, because they want they want these ballots to be counted slowly on purpose to give the impression that Donald Trump will win the state because of the this this idea of a red mirage, the election day votes, which are overwhelmingly Republican, come in first. And then, of course, then they have the ability to count the mail-in ballots, which are going to skew Democratic. But having Trump in the lead and then losing that lead gives them some predicate to be able to cry fraud. Right. So you've just answered your own question, right? Why does Pennsylvania have all of these these sort of very old and antiquated provisions that don't seem to make any sense in the modern age because the Republicans in Pennsylvania refuse to change the laws to modernize them because they want to, they think they are helping Donald Trump by giving him rhetorical points to score, letting him, look, he, he's already claiming fraud in Pennsylvania. He knows he's losing. You know, I, I, I said this the other day on, on, on Twitter that if you, if you wanna know who's winning in Pennsylvania, don't pay attention to the polls. Pay attention to Donald Trump. Donald Trump knows he's losing in Pennsylvania because that's why he's he's making up all these false claims of fraud already and why they are attacking this in the Supreme Court. And so I guess the, the point I'm trying to get at here is what is the way that we can best move forward to change these antiquated laws as far as Pennsylvania's elections are concerned? Yeah, so a couple of things. First is we need to elect Democrats up and down the ballot. You know, uh, we are we are on the uh, in the closing days here before the 2024 election. And, you know, everyone who's watching this has had an opportunity to hear from the candidates. You had an opportunity to study the issues. You had an opportunity to understand the stakes and the consequences of this election. Now it is your obligation to set all that aside and to vote. OK, and you need to vote not just for Kamala Harris for U.S. president, which is essential, but you need to vote for Bob Casey for U.S. Senate if you're in Pennsylvania. If you're someplace else, vote for your Democrat for Senate. You need to vote for your Democratic member of how of the House or candidate for House of Representatives. And you need to vote for Democratic legislatures. You know, there are a lot of legislative chambers on the ballot that can make a real difference in whether we have access to better voting or worse voting, whether women have full access to reproductive health care or don't. And and so everyone, you know, no more excuses, no more complaining, no more fetching about, you know, this issue or that. Make sure you're going to vote and vote. Perfectly put. We'll leave it there. Uh, for those who are watching right now and want to support the invaluable work that Mark and his team are doing in the courts, which is ground zero for these um, stolen election claims that are inevitably inevitably going to be put forward by Donald Trump and his team. Uh, one small step we can all take is to sign up for Democracy Docket. It's the news outlet Mark founded to focus on everything voting in elections. It will be especially important right now. So please make sure to sign up. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. I'm Mark Elias. This is Democracy Watch. Democracy Watch.